Hey there. I offer this podcast freely. Your support really makes a difference. To make a donation, visit ReneeMcKenna.com. Welcome to Spiritual Psychology. My name is Renee LaValle McKenna, and I bring my 30 plus years as a recovering addict and ex crazy person turned therapist and shamanic healer to bring you snackable teachings on spirituality, psychology, and all things personal growth. And today I want to talk about empathy exhaustion, or what's sometimes called empathy fatigue. And for those of us who care for other people, whether it's directly, as in caring for children, the elderly, or the infirm, or whether we care deeply for the suffering of others, the homeless, the powerless, people suffering in war and poverty that we may have never met. And many of us do care very, very deeply. And that care is rooted in love and goodwill, a sense of social justice or social injustice, an honest desire for the well-being of others, and often a deep drive to make the world a better place. And all of those are good and healthy. In fact, those energies and attitudes actually drive the evolution of our species into greater compassion, expanded awareness. And this type of empathy has been the catalyst often for great social change, for human rights, and often leads the call to put an end to atrocities that have been an accepted part of human behavior for millennia. Genocide and domestic violence, war and institutional racism are no longer simply accepted as normal things in most cultures around the world. I would say in large part, thanks to the empaths. And empathy is the ability to understand the experience and feelings of others outside of your own perspective. So say your friend just lost their mother. Empathy is what allows you to understand the level of pain or grief she's going through, even though you may not have yet experienced the death of a close loved one. But as an empath, things go a step further and you actually sense and feel the other person's emotions as if they're part of your experience. In other words, someone else's pain or happiness becomes your pain or happiness. And the proliferation of social media and the news can wreak havoc on the empaths because we can be inundated on a daily or even hourly basis with the suffering of others in the world, depending on what you're looking at. Being an empath means we are highly sensitive and receptive people. And I have come to see that sensitivity as a superpower. But just like all superheroes need to learn how to develop, manage, and direct their particular superpowers so that they're more effective, Spider-Man needs to learn how to shoot his webs accurately so he's not crashing into buildings when he's swinging from place to place. As empaths, we need to learn how to manage our sensitivity so that it is helpful and not harmful in our lives. And I did a podcast on feeling deeply as a superpower, number 81, if you want to check that out. And I suffered deeply from my own particular empathic tendencies, particularly around the suffering of the earth, human abuse of the environment. And in my personal relationships, being particularly drawn to people who'd been severely abused or neglected. And I don't know if I was drawn to them or they were drawn to me. It was a little bit of both. But I have almost always had long-suffering people in my life. And ultimately, many of those relationships exhausted me and didn't end well. My deep desire to help was untrained and often unwise. And ultimately, I came to see... The energy I was putting in to relieve the suffering of others was energy that I needed to turn toward myself and my own shadow work, my own healing and growth, which ultimately put me in a position to be helpful in more effective ways. And although I am still a highly sensitive person, that won't change, nor would I want it to, through a lot of personal growth work, healing and recovering my own unresolved emotional issues, and the desire to be more effective in actually helping people, that empathy has evolved into compassion. And compassion is a safer and cleaner place to be. And compassion and empathy are very related because they both involve responding to other people's emotions or felt experience. 
but they differ in focus. Empathy is an awareness of other people's emotional experience in an attempt to feel those same emotions from that person's perspective, while compassion is characterized by the desire to take action to help that other person and relieve their suffering. And most of us have both, and certainly empathy can drive compassion from a selfish perspective, which is why empathy can be problematic. Because if your suffering causes me suffering, then I want you to stop suffering so that I stop suffering. And although compassion can be totally wound in there and actually desiring for the other person's life and experience to be better, for the empath, it is often driven by our own selfish desire to not suffer. So for example, when my friend Petra was trying to get clean and sober, and she kept relapsing on drugs and alcohol, and every time she would relapse, something terrible would happen. And she had a long history of trauma. And she was a really funny, intelligent person. And she'd call me and we'd talk for hours and hours. I really wanted to help her. And when she was doing good, I'd feel good. And then she'd relapse or get beat up by her boyfriend or arrested. Oh, and I'd be devastated. And over time, as I came to look at my own codependency issues, my over-responsibility for others and my under-responsibility for myself, because it was a lot easier for me to care about you than it was for me to care about me, I came to see that my suffering for her suffering was actually increasing the suffering from everyone. Suffering plus suffering equals more suffering, because Petra was an empath as well, and not only felt the sting of her own dysfunction when she relapsed, but she felt guilty because she knew I was suffering for it too. That's kind of the idea that our karma was getting intertwined. I was spending way too much time on her side of the street and not enough time caring for my own side of the street. And I really thought that made me a good person and I had a responsibility to help her in this empathic way. I thought that my empathy was helpful. But over time, after watching these relationships play out, and I have a long string of overly caregiving relationships that didn't end well, that ultimately I wasn't able to save or help the other person. And that as I got healthier and started to care more for myself, developed healthy boundaries of what's my stuff and what's your stuff, those people often experienced that as abandonment and neglect, or they just went and found someone else who would caretake them because that's where they were at in their development. In fact, in the worst case scenarios like Petra, ultimately, when I said no to giving her money for her electric bill, she stopped talking to me and put me, I believe, in the category as another one of her abusers or neglectors. So the very thing I was trying to help and save her from, I get to play right into that pattern myself and perpetuate it. And this is where the perspective of compassion is really helpful, the desire to take action to relieve the suffering of others. And this calls us really to grow in wisdom of what is truly helpful for another person. Is it helpful in the short run? Is it helpful in the long run? Certainly, I helped with a lot of emotional support and even physical cleanup with Petra in her self-destructive cycles, but we can't save anyone from themselves. And often when we are, quote unquote, trying to save someone from their suffering, we end up unconsciously participating in that suffering cycle. So it requires some contemplation and often deep introspection about what is truly helpful for this other person. And this has brought me to a wider understanding of what I call the soul's journey that each of us is on. And from a soul level perspective, each of us is here to grow and evolve. And the circumstances of our life are not a coincidence. And they are, in my understanding, usually the perfect configuration to put pressure on the carbon of our own soul substance and turn it into a diamond. That doesn't always happen. Maybe we get many, many lifetimes to grow and develop toward the peace, joy, and universal love that are the ultimate truth of the larger consciousness system. In fact, most of our work, I think, is removing the blocks to that peace, 
love and flow that are our birthright. Now, on a personality level, no one wants to be abused or neglected, raped or tortured or any of the other horrific experiences we can have as humans. But on a soul level, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Our individual form is impermanent. Death is part of what we signed up for. And that is not a design flaw. There's a particular kind of learning and alchemy happening here on the third density of Middle Earth that can be profoundly transformative if we relate ourselves from this place of wisdom and compassion and surrendering to or being a student of the intelligence of the universe that we are called to grow in understanding of. And I have found tremendous comfort, benefit, and perspective from developmental systems like spiral dynamics and David Hawkins' levels of consciousness. Spiral dynamics looks at the developmental process of individuals and groups based on their worldview. And Levels of Consciousness understands our individual development from a kind of energetic or emotional resonance standpoint. The idea that we each have a particular perspective or lens that we view the world through that colors every experience that we have. And these are different systems, but certainly related. I've done podcasts on both Spiral Dynamics, podcast number 25, and David Hawkins' Levels of Consciousness, podcast number 76, Blame to Bliss, Evolving Levels of Consciousness. These are enormous topics, which I continue to revisit, but on a practical basis, if you are experiencing empathy fatigue, which is when we can start to become numb to the suffering of others or overwhelmed, depleted, if other people's suffering, whether it's a friend or family member, disenfranchised on the streets, or the victims of war, genocide, or other atrocities in other parts of the world, I encourage you to turn your attention inward to your own soul's journey. Where are you being called to grow in understanding and effectiveness in relation to the suffering of the world? And of course, it's not limited to human suffering, suffering creatures, the environment, And what are the next steps in your own evolution, in the relief of your own suffering, that you may be ultimately more helpful to others? I'm going to tell you, Petra took up a lot of my time and resources. And when that relationship ended, became part of a long line of teachings in how to use my energy most effectively, because I still desire to be helpful. It's why I do this podcast. I've come to see that some of my overly empathic suffering for others was actually a distraction from facing some of the challenging things I needed to do in my own life, like go to graduate school and write a book. I'm way too busy helping and saving other people to spend time on my own goals and dreams. And ultimately, I understand today that Petra's sole work is to grow in the ability to pay her own electric bill and that my paying it for her was ultimately supporting her stuckness rather than helping her to grow and evolve. So my experience is that some of the best work we can do to help others is actually to grow and evolve ourselves. And that elevating our own levels of consciousness and perspective elevates the resonance of the larger pool of consciousness that we're all involved in. And on an individual basis, it also ultimately usually makes us more effective in being actually helpful to those we hope to serve. Thank you so much for listening. I'm very excited. Just started writing an ebook on healing trauma, a nice companion to my 10 session healing trauma course, which over 3,000 people have done. There's a link to that in the show notes. It's really incredible, gentle, and empowering journey to self healing with spiritual psychology methods based in shamanism, Buddhist philosophy, and the best of Western psychology. If you have unresolved emotional issues, check out my 10-session healing trauma course. And if you'd like some individual help on your personal growth journey, shoot me an email, info at reneemckenna.com. Let's set up a 30-minute discovery call. See if a block of spiritual psychology work might benefit you in your life. Check me out on Insight Timer. I'm always doing free workshops there. I'm also working on providing a 
shadow work journal. And I should have links to those free offerings in the next few weeks. Deep gratitude to my supporters through this podcast and on Patreon. Blessings on your path until we meet again. This is Renee LaValle McKenna for Spiritual Psychology.